Welcome to another key event in British history from the Reigns History Department. For this event, we're going to be focusing on the Peasants Revolt. Today's learning objectives are as follows. To be able to describe the key events of the Peasants' Revolt, to be able to explain the consequences of the Peasants' Revolt. For your do now task, I want you to think about the following. What does the word protest mean to you? And for a challenge, can you think of any current examples of protest? And what is the difference between a protest and a revolt? Whilst you're doing this, you should pause the video and it should take you around two to three minutes. Once finished, press play to resume. So press pause now. In terms of the difference then between a protest and a revolt, well, a protest is often done by a group of people. It can be an individual and it is done so that they are able to show whoever is in charge or whoever they're protesting about that they are unhappy with the decisions or actions that that person or government has taken. A revolt, however, is not just about showing anger or displeasure with something, but it's about actively trying to overthrow and change the very government and system by which a country or area lives. In terms of the word peasant then, well, that is a word that often refers to a labourer or farmer during the pre-industrial period, very often living in the Middle Ages. Um, and it would refer to people who are living under feudalism, having to pay rent, tax and fees to a landlord. And this landlord would usually have been someone like a baron or a knight. Things would not go well with England until everything was held in common. It was these words uttered by John Ball, a priest in England, that helped start the Peasants' Revolt in 1381. Just 30 years earlier, England and Europe had battled the wicked pestilence that became known as the Black Death. England lost nearly 40% of its population. It was a social and economic catastrophe. Workers were few and far between, and as a result, peasants began to demand more wages. Unsurprisingly, this did not please the barons, lords, and even the church. Edward III steps in and decreed in the 1351 Statute of Labour that there be a maximum wage to stop peasants demanding more money. This made the peasants very angry. The introduction and collection of a poll tax under Edward and then Richard II only upset the peasant population more. Things would come to a head in May 1381. A poll tax collector came into a town in Essex called Fobbing. He was there to collect taxes from everyone over the age of 15. However, it wasn't money that he would be collecting. No. Instead, he was met with hostility, nearly collecting a good hiding for his work. Word soon spread of this resistance, and Richard II, just 14 years old, sent more men to fobbing. Again, they were met with fierce resistance, and soon villagers from all over the southeast of England set off on a march to London, demanding an audience with the king. This group of peasants would soon have a leader, a leader in the form of a former soldier called Wat Tyler. Under his command, they became an organized army with an estimated 60,000 men. On their way to London, they removed, or they are believed to have destroyed tax registers and government buildings, even removing the heads of tax collectors. Upon entering London, some of those in the rebellion began to attack lawyers and priests. In an attempt to stop this spread of violence, King Richard II agreed to meet with Wat Tyler and his men in Mile End on the 14th of June, 1381. Did you know 
So not much is actually known of Wat Tyler's early life. In fact, there are varying sources even on his birth. One claims that he was born in 1341, while others claim that he was born in around 1320. However, most historians agree that it was in fact 1341. Another area of dispute, or not so much dispute, but certainly uncertainty, is around his surname, because his original surname is not known. In fact, it is thought that the surname Tyler comes from his occupation, which was as a roof tiler. At the meeting, Richard promised to end serfdom and feudalism. However, Whilst this meeting was taking place, some rebels had gone to the Tower of London. Here they found the Archbishop of Canterbury, Simon Sudbury, and they murdered him. This led to Richard II fearing for his life once more, and he decided to meet Wat Tyler and his men again the next day at Smithfield. It was at this meeting that a serious argument broke out. During the dispute, the mayor of London, William Woolworth, slashed at Wat Tyler, slicing his neck. It was this wound that would eventually kill him. Surprisingly, though, this did not actually lead to further fighting. Instead, Richard II proclaimed, I am your king. I will be your leader. Follow me into the fields. He also promised to once again end serfdom, and the peasants content that he would stay true to his word returned home. The peasants' revolt was over. So whilst Richard was at Myland, a group of rebels entered the Tower of London. And this is when we know that they killed the Archbishop. But what is surprising is that they also, apparently, were going to execute the future King of England, Henry IV, who was actually saved by one of the Royal Guards. So what is the significance of the Peasants' Revolt? Well, did first of all King Richard II end serfdom? In a short, no. In fact, angered by the rebellion, he rounded up some of the leading men like John Ball and had them executed. However, it did lead to some improvements, as rich landowners could no longer push the poor around and another poll tax would not be collected until the late 20th century. Its importance lies in the fact that it was the first time that English people began to really think about freedom and that the peasants of the time began to form organised political thought. Now time for the quick quiz. So on your screen, you'll see 10 questions. What I want you to do is to have a go at answering each of those questions. If you need to review the video, that's totally fine. So what I would suggest doing is getting a piece of paper and pen and writing your answers directly onto it. This should take you around five minutes, maybe longer. So press pause and then press play to find out the answers. So press pause now. So now time for the answers. So with another colour pen, if, if possible, I want you to mark your responses. Give yourself a mark out of 10 and then get ready for the main task. So press pause to mark your response and then press play once you've finished. So press pause now. Now time for the main task. So to begin with, I would suggest watching the BBC Bite Size video on the Peasants' Revolt or re-watching this video. Then I want you to imagine that you are Watt Tyler standing in front of a crowd of peasants and it's going to be your job to persuade them as to why they should revolt. On the right hand side I've got a list of keywords for you to use. So try and use as many words as possible or as many of those keywords as possible in your speech. This should take you around 15 to half an hour actually really and then once you've completed that there is one final challenge task for you to have a go at. 
So press pause now. Now it's time for you to write a speech to raise awareness on a current modern day issue that you yourself would like to protest about. Think about things that might upset you, things that have happened in terms of, you know, with the environment maybe, or about equality. And I want you to write a speech to convince other people to join you in your protest. Alternatively, this time, if you wish, you can draw a protest, a poster, sorry, representing your reasons for protest. So thanks again, Year 8 and 9, for joining us on our key events in British History series. <laughs>